the Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's join The Great Gildersleeve. But first, let's decide which Gildersleeve we want to join. For Gildersleeve is a man of many sides. Shall it be Gildersleeve, the man of action? Oh. Or Gildersleeve, the guardian and protector of his niece and nephew. Leroy, stick in your shirt tail. Or Gildersleeve, the great lover. <laughs> no, let us drop in on still another Gildersleeve. The Gildersleeve the world knows as Summerfield's water commissioner. The big shot in his private office in the city hall. Gildersleeve, the executive. <laughs> Wonder what time it is. <sighs> Quarter of five? Must be later than that. Oh, Bessie. Bessie. That Bessie, I'm going to have to let her go. Bessie! Did you call me, Mr. Gildersleeve? That I did, Bessie. What time is it by the clock out there? By the clock? Quarter of five. Oh, well, all right. Certainly feels later. Have you taken care of these things, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'd like to clear up your desk a little. Yes, it's a mess. How do you expect me to get any work done, Bessie, when you leave papers all over my desk? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. You told me to leave all those folders on annual rainfall so you can use them in your budget report. Oh, rainfall folders. Oh, that's what these are. But what's all this pile here? Oh, those are the monthly financial reports for 1945. You asked for them last week. I wonder what for. <laughs> yes, sir, I wondered myself. Well, take them away till I think of it. Yes, sir. What's all this stuff over here? Oh, that's your immediate file, Mr. Gildersleeve. Immediate? Getting a little behind on that, aren't we? Yes, sir. Well, no time like the present, Bessie. Let's just wade through this pile and clean it up. Now? Yes, now. Put that other stuff in the files and then bring your book. Yes, sir. Let's see here. State Association of Water Commissioners. Dear Mr. Gildersleeve... We're making a survey to determine the average power input of municipal pumps in this state. If you could get these figures from your engineer sometime in the next few days and forward them to us promptly, we'll be greatly obliged, yours truly. Bessie, uh, Bessie, oh, you're here. Uh, uh, call Charlie Anderson out at the reservoir, please. Yes, sir. Take this, Bessie, while you're waiting. Uh, state Association of Water Commissioners, dear sirs, in reply to yours of August 10th, she... Hello, uh, Mr. Gildersleeve calling. Yeah, thank you, Bessie. Hello, Charlie. How's it going? Well, never mind how it's going. I want you to give me some figures. What's the power input on our pump out there? No, Charlie, that's no attitude. Th you mean you don't know? Then figure it out and call me back. It's not a waste of time. It's very important. And if you... Hello. Oh, hello. He hung up. Why, George, if I knew where to find another engineer, but I don't. Uh, what have you got there, Bessie? In reply to yours of August 10th. August 10th. Well, the survey must be over by now. Throw that away, Bessie. We'll tackle something else. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, let's see. What's this one? Oh, yeah. Mrs. Joel Toddbinder. I can't believe I used the amount of water for which you have billed me during the month of September. Kindly explain. Oh, there's four or five letters like that. There are? these people think we do? Make up meter readings out of our heads? Take this. Dear Mrs. Todd Binder, uh, several of these, you say, Bessie? Yes, sir. And we ought to have a form answer for it. I'll make up a form letter and you can send it to all these people. Yes, sir. But I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Anything else that's, uh, pressing? Well, the whole file requires immediate answers, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, we made a good start on it, Bessie. I doubt if we could finish it tonight anyway. Suppose we get at it bright and early tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. What time is it now, Bessie? Well, my watch says a quarter to five. And your watch is slow. It was a quarter to five ten or fifteen minutes ago. Time to close up, Bessie. If you say so, Mr. Gildersleeve. I do say so. But bright and early tomorrow, Bessie. Bright and early tomorrow. Oh, the trouble I've 
tree. Nobody knows my son. Hiya, Bertie. You can't have nothing to eat now, Leroy. It's too close to supper. Okay. I told you time and time again, if you want to eat, you come to me right after school and I'll fix you something. You can't come in here just before supper and fill up your stomach. I'm not even hungry. Well, you better be hungry when you sit down at the table. I got us a roast of beef tonight with our brand new November points. Yeah? What's the matter with you, Leroy? Don't you feel good? Yeah, I feel okay. I got another bad report card today. Oh, that's what's preying on your mind. I thought you'd been mighty quiet this afternoon. I'm afraid Uncle hit the roof. Oh, he won't hurt you. He sure was mad last time. I'm scared to show it to him. Make a clean breast of it, Leroy. That's the only way. Just say I done it and I'm sorry. Yeah? Yeah, that's the way I do every time I bust a cup. <laughs> you do? Yes, sir. Everything open and above board. Handle it that way, nobody ever gets anything on Birdie. Well, I tried hiding it last time. What happened? She. <laughs> I might try your system this time. What could I lose? That's probably your uncle now, Leroy. Yeah. Go on, son. Get it over with. The sooner you show it to him, the sooner it's all over. That's what I'm afraid of. Go on. He won't hurt you. Well, I'll try it. Hi, Elf. Glad to see you home so early. It's not particularly early, Leroy. Oh, well. I'm glad you're home anyway. Isn't it nice that Unc's home, Marge? What? Well, thank you, my dear. Ah, uh, never mind her. Uh, the reason I'm glad you're home is there's something I want to talk to you about, Unc. All right, Leroy, just as soon as I wash my hands. Okay. Gee, it sure gets dark early these days, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Probably on account of daylight saving, huh? I suppose so. I wish they'd go back to the old way. It's better for people's eyes, don't you think so? Uh, possibly, if they put back daylight saving... Leroy, could... it will not be necessary for you to supervise my washing. Well, I don't intend to supervise... Stay I... out. Now, Leroy. Oh, did you have a nice wash? Yeah, fine, thank you. Here's tonight's paper, Unc. Haven't even opened it. Well, a treat. Thank you very much. Uh, uh. Something you wanted to ask me, was there, my boy? I got my report card today, and it's pretty bad. Oh? Let me see it. I got bad marks and everything. I don't know how to explain it. I work hard. I did all the stuff. I don't know. I must be dumb or something. Come here, Leroy. Let me see the card. Yes, sir. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Leroy. Isn't it terrible, Unc? I feel pretty bad about it. Huh? I got my report card today, and I did swell and everything. Shut up, will you? There must be some explanation for this, Leroy. It's just my fault, Unc, that's all. I'm not blaming anybody but myself. That's no explanation. I never had any trouble when I was in the B-7. All that stuff is easy. Marjorie, I think you better leave this to me. Yeah. Well, all I know is anybody that tries can learn that stuff in their sleep. In his sleep, and I will handle this, please. Leroy, this is, well, it's very serious. I know it, Uncle. I sure hope I can do better next month. Yes, well, I'm sure that you... I just have to work harder than ever, that's all. Are you kidding? It... <laughs> now, Marjorie, let's not assume Leroy is insincere. I believe your brother is ready to turn over a new leaf. I think we should help him. That's right. If you buckle down and work hard, my boy, you can show improvement. You're not stupid. I should say not. Only all the stuff is so hard. It's over my head. It's not really, my boy. Not if you understand it. Perhaps I can explain some of it to you. Could you, Unc? Help you every night of the week if you want. Gee, that'd be super. Because I really got a load. Monday night I have to do English, and Tuesday night is my arithmetic night, and Wednesday is history. Don't tell me anymore, Leroy. You'll talk me out of it. This looks like one of my bad weeks. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. 
The other day, while I was waiting my turn at the grocery store refrigerator, I saw a lady trying to decide which spread to buy. Naturally, since my job is to sell parquet, I thought I'd give it a little boost. So I said, have you ever tried parquet margarine? Well, I've heard of it often. Is it really as good as people say? Yes, ma'am. I know lots of people think parquet's fine, fresh flavor is the best they've ever tried. Well, that's what I'm looking for. A spread for bread and toast that really tastes good. And I know that you're also interested in good nutrition. Now, on the package here, you'll notice that parquet is made from rich in energy vegetable oils from the farm and that it's fortified with important vitamin A. And you can plainly see from the price tag that parquet margarine is only about half the price of costly spreads. Now, I'm just repeating to you folks what I told the lady, and I'm happy to say that I helped make a sale. So next time you do your shopping, I hope you decide to buy delicious, economical parquet. The spread preferred by millions because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Now let's get back to our story and see how Gildersleeve has been getting along with the education of his nephew. To tell the truth, he hasn't really got around to it. Monday night... Well, Monday, something came up. Tuesday night. Tuesday night, I ran into a friend. Wednesday night. Well, Wednesday was something else. Now, it's Thursday, and even Leroy is getting uneasy. Look, Uncle, let's face it. I've got to write a composition about the Missouri Compromise, and I've got to have it in tomorrow. Confound it, Leroy. Haven't you done that yet? No, and that's not all. I've got about nine million problems in arithmetic and a map to draw and a whole lot of spelling. Why do you let it pile up this way? Why do you keep putting it off? I was waiting for you to help me like you promised. Excuses? All I get is excuses. You did say you'd help him, Uncle Mort. Thanks, Marge. When I need to be reminded of my promises, my dear, I'll ask for it. Well, holler. I'll be up in my room. (laughs) That girl. There's such a thing as being too smart. I wish she'd get a low report card just once. Well, Leroy, come on. Let's see what seems to be the trouble here. What's your most difficult subject? History. What don't you understand about it? I don't get it, that's all. I can't learn it. Never say can't, my boy. Well, I can't. Nonsense. History can be a very interesting subject. If you approach it properly... Well, how do you approach it? By the simple process of learning it. Just learn it, that's all. But I can't. Don't keep saying that. Of course you can learn it. I learned it, you can learn it. Now, for instance, you've got to write a composition about the Louisiana Purchase. Very well. The Missouri Compromise. All right, the Missouri Compromise. It's the same thing. Are you kidding? (laughs) Well, that is, I mean they're related. Everything in history is related, my boy. That's the important thing in history, to learn the relation of things. Now, for example, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin. Remember that, Leroy, that's mighty important. But it was Rogers and Clark who discovered the Northwest Territory. I don't get the relation. (laughs) Well, you're a little young, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, let's get down to this composition of yours now. What was it to be? The Missouri Compromise. Oh, yes, that. What was the Missouri Compromise, Unc? Uh, Well, it took place in Missouri, my boy. (laughs) Natch, but what was it? Uh, it took place some years ago, as I remember. I forget the exact date. I know the date, 1820. But what was it? The Missouri Compromise? Well, it was a sort of a compromise. <laughs> that is to say, it was, well, just what it says, the Missouri Compromise. Everybody knows what the Missouri Compromise was. Unc, will you tell me one thing? What? What good is history, anyway? Well, history is a lot of good. If you learn it now, it'll help you in later life. How? Well, that depends. It depends on what you do in later life. Yes. Have you given any thought to that, my boy? What do you plan to be when you grow up? How should I know? Confounded Leroy. You see, that's what's the matter with you. You have no purpose, no sense of responsibility, no plan in life. You just live from day to day. But, Uncle, I'm just a little kid. (laughs) If you're old enough to stay up till 9.30 at night, you're old enough to be responsible. You've got to organize yourself, my boy. You've got to start making sense. Doorbell. I'll get it. There you go. Right while I'm trying to talk to you. Hi, Judge. Come in. Thank you, Leroy. Is your uncle planning to go to the meeting, do you know? I don't know, but he's right in here if you want to talk to him. Oh, hello, Horace. Evening, Gildy. 
Going to the school board meeting? I can't. I promised to help Leroy with his homework tonight. Well, I'm sure Leroy won't mind. I if... never break a promise to a child, Judge. That's something I make a point of. Huh. Leroy, go to your room. I didn't mean anything, Unc. You can't work down here anyway with people dropping in all the time. Pardon me. Oh, no offense, Judge. <laughs> Stick around. Leroy, you go upstairs and get started on that composition. I'll come up later and see how you're doing. But you still haven't told me about the Missouri Compromise. Why should I? It's all in the encyclopedia. Go look it up. That's what education is for, my boy, to teach you to look things up. And that's what the encyclopedia is for, to look things up in. I still don't see what the Missouri... Don't bother me anymore with the Missouri Compromise. Ye gods, go upstairs and get to work. Oh, uh, that boy. I don't know what I'm going to do about him, Horace. No power of concentration. Puts everything off. Completely disorganized. Oh, I don't know. I was talking to him just now. Absolutely no sense of responsibility. No thought for the future. I asked him what he wanted to be when he grows up. He doesn't know. The boy has no life plan. What's your life plan, Gildy? Huh? <laughs> I say, what's your life plan? What do you mean? Well, what thought have you given to the future? Are you going to be a small-town water commissioner all your life? The office of water commissioner, Horace, is not one to be sneezed at. Hmm. Big frog in a little puddle. <laughs> That's all you are, Gildy. I resent that. I don't know where you get off to talk about Leroy. You're not even a very good water commissioner. Horace! Well, be honest with yourself, Gildy. Are you? You aren't there half the time. You shilly-shally, you put things off. There's no saying, you know, Gildy, procrastination is the thief of time. I know, I know. Well, it's true. You've been in that office three years now, what have you done? And what did you do before that? And what are you going to do in the future? I don't know, Horace. I just don't know. I'm saying this is your friend, Throckmorton. You are my friend, Horace, and I hope I'm yours. I've always so considered you. But what you've got to realize, old friend, I'm only saying this for your own good. I know that. What you've got to realize is... You only got into that office on a political fluke. And you could be bounced out tomorrow. Horace, you haven't heard anything. No. But if they ever got on to you, if anybody ever found out how little you really know about it, why, you don't know anything about the water department. You're just a glad hander. That's all, just a small-town politician. You don't know beans about hydraulics or anything else. And you've never taken the trouble to learn. You've just been so doggone lazy... Horace, don't! Well, it's true. All these things you accuse Leroy of, he's just a chip off the old block. You're right. I've been a bad uncle. Well, I wouldn't go as far as that. I but... have. I've set him a bad example. Oh, it isn't that so much, Gildy. But what provisions have you made for the future? Suppose you were to get the can tied to you. No. <laughs> have you made any plans? Have you saved up any money? I don't even need to ask. I'm no good. I'm not worrying about you. You'd get along somehow. But what about Marjorie and Leroy? Those two sweet children. I'm no good, Horace. I'm just no good. Have nothing to do with me. No, no, old friend. That's not the way to take it. I'm a failure. A big, fat failure. <laughs> well, be that as it may, and I'm not altogether denying it. <laughs> the thing to do is not to give in to it. What do you mean? Advise me, Horace. Well, you want to be a success in life? You want to be a good water commissioner? Make yourself one. But how? Work, study, improve yourself. Go to bed early, get up early. I will. I'll go to bed at 9 o'clock. Study engineering. Learn hydraulics. Learn... But how? I'm no chicken, you know. Why, any good correspondence school must have a course in hydraulics. Write to them and... I'll do it. I'll write to them this very night, Horace. Oh, Judge, I don't know what to say to you, but... Thanks, old friend. Thanks a million. Say, Unc, I can't find anything in here about the Missouri Compromise. I looked under history and all it said... Don't bother me with your problems now, my boy. I have problems of my own. Well, for cat's sake... Bertie, Marjorie, where's last Sunday's paper? Last Sunday's paper, you say, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes. Why is it the Sunday paper always has to be thrown out before I can get a chance to read it? This is Thursday, Uncle Morris. You... I never throw out nothing, Mr. Gillsleeve. I put all the papers in the wood closet there, just as always. First I ever heard of it. Well, never mind, Bertie. I'll... 
Hey, here it is in the wood closet. What's the use of me talking? If you're looking for the funnies by any chance, they might just possibly be up in my room. No, I'm looking for the book section. Here. I saw it in here. I know I saw it in here. Ah, the Alexander Hamilton Institute. Now, clear out, everybody, please. I've got to write a letter. Marjorie, get that junk off the desk, will you? Come along, Leroy. I never heard such a fuss about writing a letter. Who's he writing to, President Truman? No, Alexander Hamilton. Oh, now, who's that? The minute I sit down, I got to get up and answer the... Well, hello, Leela. Come in. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. I just dropped over to see if there was any gentleman who'd care to invite a lady to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I'd like to, Leela. But... They're showing romance in the rain. Oh, well, I'd love to go, Leela. The only thing is, in the first place, I've already seen the picture. Oh, did you see it alone? Or... No, I saw it with somebody. Oh. How did you like the picture, Throckmorton? Well, to tell the truth, I thought it was a little shallow, Leela. Oh, you went with Miss Goodwin. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, you wouldn't mind seeing it again, I'm sure. I always think what you get out of a picture depends so much on who you see it with, don't you? You bet. I'd love to go, Leela, but you see, I've got to write this letter, and I promised myself I'd get it off this evening. Oh, an old letter. Well, it's kind of important to me. You see, it's kind of a test, Leela. Of myself, I mean. Mm -hmm. I promised myself that for once I'd do something and stick to it. You know, Throckmorton, I don't think you like me anymore. Oh, but I do, Leela. <laughs> really, but you just don't understand. Well, not if I practically throw myself at you and you tell me you have to stay home and write a letter to somebody else. But, Leela, I... Gee, I'd like to, but... Leela, tell me something. Yes? Do you think I'm a failure? Why, certainly not. Do you think I'm nothing but a glad-hander and a small-time politician? Gracious, who could ever think a thing like that? <laughs> well, that's all I want to know. Let's go to the movies. Constitutional, you two? No, we've just come from the movies. No, oh, Mrs. Oh. Ransom thought she'd like a hot chocolate. Mm, it's so cold out. It is a little chilly. I I'll just warm it up a little. It won't take a minute. <laughs> Something for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, thanks, PB. Nothing. Well, it's not like you, Throckmorton. You sure? Um, PB, if you should see Judge Hooker, I'd be grateful if you didn't mention to him that you saw me this evening or... That I went to the movies. Just as you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's wrong, Morton? What possible difference could it make to Horace? Oh, none. I'd just rather he didn't know, that's all. What's wrong, honey? You don't seem like yourself tonight. Nothing. You haven't seemed like yourself all evening, except when you fell asleep there. <laughs> and that was only for many. Well, I feel I've been a bad boy this evening, that's all. Why ever should you? Because, Leela, there were some things I promised myself I was going to do. I was going to help Leroy, and I didn't. And I was going to write to some people, the Alexander Hamilton Institute. Yeah, there you are, Mrs. Ransom. Oh, thank you, Mr. Peavy. It's hot. Watch out. And so you folks went to the movies, eh? How was the picture? Oh, just wonderful. So, so. I don't get to go to many movies myself. Mrs. Peavy likes to go occasionally, but I have to work late here. Peavy, so. you don't know how lucky you are. I don't know. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yes, you are, Peavy. You're one of the luckiest men I know. You know what you want out of life, and you get it. You're a real success. Yeah, I'm much obliged, but and I... And another thing where you're lucky. You're married. I could answer that, too. <laughs> Certainly, you don't have a lot of temptations to keep you from doing what you should be doing. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that, either. <laughs> Throckmorton, I just don't understand what you're talking about. You wouldn't understand if I told you, Leela. This has to do with life. Oh? Yeah, drink your chocolate. <laughs> Men are so strange sometimes. Uh, what I mean to say, Peavy, is, well, confounded, here you are working till 11 o'clock at night. You stick to things. You get them done. You have willpower. 
Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll tell you a little about that. You might not think it, but it used to be I had a lot of trouble with my willpower. Fact, I was this way and that about things. Just couldn't seem to make up my mind. Then one summer, Mrs. Peavy and I took a little trip. Well, uh, what's that got to do with uh, willpower? Well, I'm coming to that. We took a trip to Chautauqua, you know. They have a sort of a camp meeting there with lectures and so on. There's one fellow, he's quite a talker. Big, tall fellow, I remember, with black hair and a gold tooth. His lecture was about willpower. Well, uh, what do you have to say about it? Well, it was his theory that if you believe you can do a thing, you can do it. That's what he said. If you believe it hard enough, you can do it. Got him there. Hmm, maybe. I'll never forget that fellow. He stood up there and sort of flung his arms around when he talked, and his eyes were black, and they seemed to bore right through you. Yeah? I remember the words he said when he was winding up. He banged on the desk, and he shouted, I am the captain of my faith and my unconquerable soul. Looked at me when he said it. <laughs> and from then on, your willpower was okay? Well, not exactly. I've always suspected that Mrs. Peavy thought the fellow was looking at her. <laughs> Because if there was ever a woman with an unconquerable soul... <laughs> keeps me on the beam, though. Yeah, but it's Mrs. Peavy's willpower. Do you think I'd be down here working till 11 o'clock at night if I had my way about it? <laughs> Why, you're no better than the rest of us, Peavy. Did you say it was? By George, you're all right. Have a hot chocolate on me. <laughs> you feeling better now, Frogmore? Oh, great. You want to know something, Peavy? That hooker, the sanctimonious old goat, he's the biggest faker in this town. Well, now, I... You may be right. <laughs> Come along, Leela. Good night, Phoebe. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few moments. One of the pleasant ways I like to spend an evening at home is to relax in a big easy chair with a good book to read and a big bowl full of popcorn to eat. Now, if anyone in your family likes popcorn as much as I do, here's a simple recipe you'll surely want to try. While the kernels of corn are popping away, melt some flavor-fresh parquet margarine in a saucepan. Pour the popcorn into a big bowl, season with salt, and then drench with melted parquet. Good? Man, there's a way to really enjoy popcorn, thanks to Parquet's fine, fresh flavor. And, of course, I expect you all know that Parquet is a favorite spread for bread, preferred by millions because it tastes so good. So for a flavor that's still unmatched by delicious, economical Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. My little niece, Marjorie, wants to say something. Well, it's about the Junior Red Cross. That's the American Red Cross for students in high school and elementary school. Yes, fine organization. Well, the Junior Red Cross does a lot of important work. During the war, we contributed millions of useful things the soldiers asked for. And now we're working to collect clothes for the orphan children in Greece and school equipment for Yugoslav and Polish children. We really do lots of good things. Don't you think all school children should join it? I do indeed, my dear. I think you presented it very nicely, too. And I hope all the children listening will join the Junior Red Cross. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.